wow. Uh, so she signed a contract with the UN Women in, mm -hmm. in Juba. Mm -hmm. uh, that was on the eve of the referendum and the election. Mm -hmm. So the program was uh, to uh, empower women mm -hmm. uh, and also the media, mm -hmm. the media capacity yeah. for journalists so mm -hmm. that they can uh, cover the elections in a more professional way and all that. Mm -hmm. So that was about two years where we were paratrooping, going mm -hmm. in and out. Yeah. And all that, that's Juba. Yeah. Then the other place is Arusha. Mm -hmm. Arusha, Tanzania. Arusha, Arusha, Tanzania. Uh -huh. That one I used to cover under national media. Yes. During the height, during the time when the, the three sister states, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania mm -hmm. leaders, yeah. presidents were, decided that they want to revive the East African community. Mm -hmm. So we, I covered that one. Yeah. And uh, at the tail end of the the COVID-19, mm -hmm. I had an opportunity now to go back because mm -hmm. I didn't want all my stories to be historical. Yeah. So I went back and I wrote a story now how it is, mm -hmm. yeah. how the East of community is. Mm -hmm. By that time, when we used to be there before, 30 years ago it yeah. was, they only had three member states. Mm -hmm. But now, since then, they've mm -hmm. had another three, so there are six. If had, I think they are seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it gave it a uh, relevance mm -hmm. uh, at that time. So that is Arusha. Mm -hmm. And then I said, wait a minute, if I can remember Arusha, mm -hmm. that's 35, 30, 35 years ago. Wow, it's a long time. Why don't I do Kampala? Kampala. Yes. Wow. So Kampala also. Mm -hmm. Went down and I did a nice story about it. Mm -hmm. About when we went, the first time I went there, as a, mm -hmm. as a, I went to visit my mom's cousin, mm -hmm. who is an Asuba, a Basuba, mm -hmm. uh, staying there. Yes. And uh, then now, when we had this opportunity after COVID uh, was cleared, and mm -hmm. now it was cheaper to travel. No, the COVID was very expensive to travel yes. because you had to pay for all those special vaccines. Mm -hmm. No, what is it called? For, Yes, there was different COVID vaccines. Vaccines and then for. also the travel, the documents here and there. Mm -hmm. and so I went back and yes. we coincided with that uh, death and I mean funeral of that uh, the uncle had visited earlier on over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I went then I said, why don't I do three stories instead of one? Yeah. So I did one of the uh, uh, destination Ginger. Mm -hmm. uh, source of the Nile. It was mm -hmm. so nice for me to go there and feel like, mm -hmm. uh, what was it called, speak? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Briton who went there and, dis and allegedly discovered the mm -hmm. source of the Nile. Uh -huh. So when I went, I was so happy. I even pressed, I even yeah. um, <laughs> I pointed at the source of the Nile and yeah. I said, uh -huh. and I wrote a caption, Olale mm -hmm. discovers the source of the Nile. <laughs> And when wow. I sent it to Kenya, you guys were so excited. Say, oh my goodness, you leave Kenya to go and discover this. <laughs> so from wow. Ginger, I went to Kampala. Yes. I went back to Memory Lane, mm -hmm. places where I'd been, Makere University, the, yeah. Kabaka, the Kabaka tombs. Mm -hmm. And then by coincidence, when I was there, I said, why don't, why don't I go to this school where my dad went? Mm -hmm. My dad went to, was to go to Makere, but he missed it by a few points. Mm -hmm. So he went to a school there called Agri Memorial School. Mm -hmm. So that was also part of the story. That wow. that school still exists, and mm. it is a it's all like a high cost school. Wow! But not private as such. Mm. Uh, it like it was before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so from there, then I went for the burial of this uncle, mm -hmm. and that gave me another. So that's what I'm saying. Like now, when you hear, you can have so many stories. Mm. So I went to for the during the burial. I said, "Why don't I do a story about?" history of my Abasuba roots. My mom is Abasuba, my mm -hmm. dad is Aluo. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know the difference. Yeah. They are different. Uh -huh. Abasubas are Bantus. Uh -huh. they, wow. they, they, they fled from, mm -hmm. from Kabaka Kingdom uh -huh. in Uganda. Uh -huh. Luos, of course, came from Southern Sudan. Yes. Yeah, so I managed to mm -hmm. attend that funeral yes. and also do a, a, a research story mm -hmm. about the roots mm -hmm. What are the roots of the uh, the the, the Basubas? Mm -hmm. yeah, other than wow. that, in Africa, mm -hmm. I've also been to South Africa. Mm -hmm. That's what those have been uh, more. Those are family visit uh, holidays, mm -hmm. Cape Town, yes, uh, and then to Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, one of the things, one of what was most interesting about that trip to Johannesburg is that my wife is one who used to go there. She knew those places. Mm -hmm. So why mm -hmm. on a on a Christmas on the Christmas Eve we went on a shop to a shopping mall, mm -hmm. and while we were going on our way there mm -hmm. on Christmas day actually, yeah. what happens? She took the wrong turning because you know they're the right, the dry right, the dry the drive on the mm -hmm. on the right. On the right. So Not she was the oh like no. Us. So <laughs> she, the police wanted to arrest her, and she was very quickly doing what Kenyans do. Uh -huh. On a kibeti. <laughs> Christmas Day, we are Christians. And so anyway, yeah. we, we started it out there yeah. and we went straight back oh. to the house. Yeah. A friend of ours had lent, had rented, given us a house mm. to stay over that, that weekend. Anyway, mm. so so those are two places I've been to South, in Southern Africa. Yeah. Cape Town, mm. beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Wine tours and all that. Yes. Uh, and then another place also went to professionally was mm. uh, Victoria Falls. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those are media conference there yes. that also attended, mm -hmm. and then I think that is it. That is what has that, that has been the highlights in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then now uh, international for forgetting Dubai. Mm -hmm. Dubai seems to be the in place now. If you have a little bit more money, you go there because yeah. they say the rates are almost like Mombasa. It's just mm -hmm. a little bit more, but you see, get much more for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. that, and then locally in Kenya. Yes. I've done uh, under the AWC feature service. Now we had we had we have we had a number of programs mm -hmm. with the UN Women, mm -hmm. with the UN uh, DFID. Mm -hmm. That's a British uh, development organization uh, agency, among others. Mm -hmm. Ford Foundation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to the counties. So one of the best ones was the, on the eve of the 20, 2013 mm -hmm. and twenty seventeen. Yes. 18 election mm -hmm. where we had a uh, prog we had a program with the uh, with the ministry of education minister of interior mm -hmm. police department in particular yes uh, to sensitize mm -hmm. the police about gender based violence yeah. and uh, how they can uh, use their gender their gender desks mm -hmm. to help in this. So we were in about eight counties. Eight counties. So my friends and colleagues, even neighbors and relatives, were wondering, mm -hmm. are you vying for a seat? Because every <laughs> now and then you're just traveling to Kilifi, uh, we're traveling to Bwajia, uh -huh. we're traveling to Mandera, yes. Bungoma, uh -huh. Nakuru, uh -huh. you know. Yes. Yeah, but that was all part of that thing mm -hmm. that uh, really helped uh, in terms of sensitization. Yeah. And also we, we, had, we had a partnership because one thing about the uh, AWC, one of its strongest areas other than gender mm -hmm. is media. Yeah. Media, media capacity building for journalists, mm -hmm. supporting them so that they can uh, not only work professionally, but be sensitive, especially in terms of reporting on uh, on issues on gender mm -hmm. and even uh, conflict. Yeah. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. instead of they should just report what is happening, not exactly. not sensationalize it. Mm -hmm. So that was that. Okay. Amazing. You've had a beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful and, journey. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And from what uh, I have picked from you, you really enjoy what you do. Oh, yes. You really enjoyed it over the years. Storytelling has been a part of you. And that is why you have so many adventures and you love each and every adventure such that you remember them vividly and put them down in a book. Because that's why we keep on insisting here at Meet the HR that you should follow your passion. Because if you're not passionate about following something, you won't see it through till the end. You'll get to a point where you give up. But now look at enjoy, look at uh, Mr. Otiambo who has enjoyed his journey such that he has picked all those memories and packaged them in a book. So whatever path it is that you choose, don't let your parents choose for you. Don't let your friends push you into it, but do it because you are passionate about it so that you can see it through till the end. Now, Mr. Tiambo, uh, can you explain to us uh, the, different, the ev evolution that you have witnessed in the media industry from back then to what we have right now? Uh, that's a good question. Yes. You know, I'm paid to pay, ask questions. And when I'm mm -hmm. asked questions, I'm so happy. Because now I'm, I'm trying to, in, in my language, we have an ex, a saying, mm -hmm. meaning a, a turtle yes. has be, is thrown into the water. Yes. Meaning it is so much at home. Uh -huh. it can yeah, the transition has been amazing. Mm -hmm. When we were jo when I was joining the media mm -hmm. in uh, 1985 mm -hmm. is when I joined the National Media officially. Mm -hmm. But why I'm talking about 40 years in journalism because during my university years we also used to do a lot. We had some work to do in journalistic 
uh, we had a newspaper mm-hmm. that we used to go sort of cover, so that's added on to that. Mm-hmm. And a, a colleague of mine yeah. in the nation, uh, Gugu Ambogua, mm-hmm. uh, a few uh, uh, last year he, he he also released a book, launched a book, that years in journalism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something like so I said, wait a minute. Yeah. If this guy who came after me can be 30, what about me? Yeah, so I said 40. Uh-huh. Yes. You know, the transition has been that we have come a long way, and mm-hmm. we thank God. Yes. Uh, before it was reporting, mm-hmm. you to, journalists were an endangered species. Mm-hmm. If they go to you, you report about uh, anything anti-government, mm-hmm. they'll come for you. Then yeah. they'll go for the, the new source. Mm-hmm. And among other things, if you're a photographer mm-hmm. or this is, or they call them videographer, yeah, they clobber you and they clob, they take the camera, they confiscate the camera, mm-hmm. and those are the days of the of the dark room mm-hmm. where you take the film, you go and take it to develop and all that. Yeah, yeah but thank God we have come, come out of that, with, yeah. and that has a lot to do with uh, the the 2010 Constitution. Mm-hmm. And the, the demands and the clamor for the twenty for the what do you call it, for the uh, repeal of Section Two A. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the darkest part, one of the darkest stage, stages in um, in my professional life, I can say, mm-hmm. uh, was I think uh, two uh, two thousand and two, mm-hmm. when uh, two thousand two thousand three, when we had to go and cover the. The, the tribal clashes, which was uh, being called, uh, uh, could, could not even call it a speed and speed, mm-hmm. called, called tribal clashes, yet it was land clashes. People are being kicked out of the land simply because of your tribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we had to go to from places where, you know, my 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 heart just was just bleeding. Mm-hmm. When you go and you find that, you find, you're told these guys came last night and they've killed so many people, Hi. and these people have been taken here, there, mm-hmm. there, there, there. Yeah. And then the other dark, uh, another dark uh, side of our profession mm-hmm. was uh, during the 2008 election, mm-hmm. uh, where it led, le- and it le- led to the post-election violence. Mm-hmm. That was also very, very traumatic mm-hmm. because that's the first time when we saw journalists, mm-hmm. the media, yeah. and observers were kicked out of uh, uh, Kenyatta International Conference Center, which is the National Tiling Center. Yes, so we were all kicked out, and after yeah. that we saw post-election violence. Yeah, Other are, than that, the, post, the 2010 post-election, I mean, the 2010 Constitution has changed the, the landscape completely. Now mm-hmm. there's a lot of freedom, yeah. and I look up to, I, and I appeal to journalists who are coming up like you, mm-hmm. and others, please, let yes. us not take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Uh, use that that opportunity to tell the stories mm-hmm. without suma- without bias yeah. and being compromised and mm-hmm. just say it as it is. Yeah. Because it's for posterity. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one you're supposed of, to work as society's watchdog. Yes. Uh-huh. And one of the things that uh, I admire when I come to this uh, library of mine, mm-hmm. come office, it reminds me of one of our pastors called Noah Onsuboga mm-hmm. from Uganda who yeah. has, uh, has decided to stay in Kenya because of the problem they had there. Mm-hmm. He said that there are two places he dreads mm-hmm. going. One yeah. is a public cemetery. Mm-hmm. The second is a, mm-hmm. you want to guess? Uh, a cemetery and... Uh, the opposite of a public cemetery. Um, a hospital? A library. A library, okay. A, a li- public <laughs> library. Why? Yeah. Public cemetery. You yeah. go and see Dr. So-and-so, mm-hmm. born, died, yeah. professor. Yes, Bishop, so, yeah. though that institutional yeah. memory is now gone, yeah. unless they are written. Mm-hmm. Uh, then now the library, why he dreads going there is because when he gets to the library, mm-hmm. he sees all those many books like I see in these shelves. Mm-hmm. All those books are, are beckoning him. Yeah. Read me, read me, yeah. read me. You're very stupid. You're yeah. very foolish. <laughs> come and read me. Yeah. 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 So uh, whenever I come here, when I, go, when I, I use the Kenya National Library, so uh, headquarters uh-huh. to do my research for my book. Yeah. Very, very good facility. But mm-hmm. not many people are using it. Yeah. yeah. Books are for the elites. Yes. For us. It's very important that we keep our minds busy. Mm-hmm. Passing exams and uh, getting a job is mm-hmm. good, but that doesn't mean that's such a good end of mm-hmm. using mm-hmm. our mind. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what word of advice would you give to uh, journalists out there who want to, uh, or people who want to take that road of journalism? What word of advice would you give them using this camera right here? 
Uh, word of advice, I think there are three of them. Number one, first of all, I have a cousin who, who decided to join the, the profession. To, it's like almost like uh, carrying the baton. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Sito Lale. Mm -hmm. He was at MTV, now he's at the Citizen TV. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, he, he saw me and he thought that I was doing a good job, so he decided to take over, but then he went into, into uh, TV, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. Yes. Uh, one of the advice I'm giving the uh, young journalists who, who are uh, especially those who are in college and are just coming up, mm -hmm. those who are there, is that is that our job is not just any other job. Mm -hmm. It is a calling. You go into it because you want to share the story with the world. Mm -hmm. So don't go there because you want to be a seller. That is one of the areas where a pitfall we have. Because by so doing, you end up in unnecessary problems. Mm -hmm. You go there and because you covered President Ruto and, and uh, the MD of such a city company mm -hmm. and, and these are the celebs, yeah. you go, you, you go, you grow horns. Mm -hmm. You think you're there. You're not there. Mm -hmm. You, you just went there, mm -hmm. you did your work, you come back. Yeah. And number two, journalists must keep on reading. Mm -hmm. There are some questions at the press conference when we hear them ask, we have to ask ourselves, I just get serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important to do a lot of reading, reading mm -hmm. generally, and then also do research on the right. topic that you're writing on. Mm -hmm. Because people, right, especially right now, people are so busy. Mm -hmm. yeah? No, I don't know that they're, either they're busy because they're busy or they're busy because there's so much involved. Mm -hmm. They are, they, they expose so much. Mm -hmm. You have the telephone, mm -hmm. phone, mobile phone, mm -hmm. iPad. You have the TV. You have unit. You you you. Yeah. You know, all these things are just asking for, wanting you to do something. Uh, yeah. Attention. yeah, so don't waste people's time with telling them stories that are not well researched. They, after the first two paragraphs, they, they reject, they won't bother reading your story. Mm -hmm. So please, do research mm -hmm. and do it well. Mm -hmm. And then, then the thing is networks. Mm -hmm. A journalist, uh, key, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of the key uh, advantages mm -hmm. that you have as a journalist, yeah. and it's your treasure, mm -hmm. networks. networks. You must create those networks mm -hmm. and maintain them. Mm -hmm. For my 40 years in journalism, I'm not bragging, but one of the things that I'm so happy about mm -hmm. is that the, the tough people who we used to interview mm -hmm. will cover those days, even up to now. When, when I meet them, mm -hmm. they meet. They, they treat me they, 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 they treat me with respect mm. why because I uh, one of the things I, I ensure that I was not encouraged even as a bureau chief, I didn't say that I was a bureau chief for six seven years in Kisumu. Wow. I would not encourage this business of envelope of journals meaning mm. handouts yeah uh, to compromise no mm. I say if you want if you want to buy me lunch mm. let's just learn buy lunch yes. and together. Mm. Why don't give me money? And then you also, you have a story that you're, you are, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, what I'm saying is that it's important that we have that good uh, working relationship. Mm -hmm. So that now, even when you leave the profession of the journalist, you go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're still at the same level. Mm -hmm. But you see, the problem is when you're compromised mm -hmm. and the, the, the politician knows that, that that's how you are, mm -hmm. they don't take you seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also not good because now in terms of content mm -hmm. for the media, mm -hmm. it goes down. It's not authentic. It's not right. yeah. mm -hmm. Amazing. Guys, I hope you have learned something from this particular episode and you have picked something. If you are a young journalist out there or if you want to take this part of journalism, you now have an idea of what it is. And remember, we said again, passion is very important. Unfortunately, that marks the end of our episode today. I hope you have picked the most important things that you're going to implement in your career. And remember, here at Meet the HR, we say there is no luck in career, but it's an opportunity meets preparation. So go out there, prepare yourself for that career, and I will see you in the job market. My name is Sylvia Manja. See you next week, same place, same time, right here. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.